Welcome to the Calculus AB video for skill number 155. I can use the first and second derivative test and the concavity test to help explain the shape of a graph. And the, the architrave trivia question for this video is, while architrave is the large stone that sits on the abacus of a column, there is another word for architrave represented in this diagram below. What does this mean, and what does architrave mean in this sense? All right, before we get into doing worksheet problems, I wanted to tell you about the three tests that are important to us. The first derivative test, and the first derivative test tells us about maxes and or mins. So if you have a derivative and the sign of the derivative goes from positive to negative, then what you have is basically positive slope and then negative slope. So there is a local max at the point where it goes from positive to negative. Similarly, if f prime goes from negative to positive, then what you have is decreasing to increasing, and at that point you're going to have a local min. The way that I've seen this on an AP test is they might give you the graph of the derivative. So your derivative does something like this, and it asks you where is the max and the min for the function. So if this is f prime of x, at what location is there a max and is there a min? Well, at this location here, you see we're going from a positive derivative to a negative derivative. So there is going to be a local max, a local max for f at x equals, maybe this was at 2, at x equals 2. And then similarly, we cross again here, and we're going from negative to positive, so that's going to tell us there is a local min for our, for our function f at x equals, maybe this is 5. Okay, that's the first derivative test. Let's take a look at the second derivative test. Actually, before second derivative test, let's look at the concavity test. And this tells us whether a function is concave up or concave down. So if our function is twice differentiable, and we can find f double prime, so the second derivative, if f double prime is greater than zero, then f is concave up. Similarly, if f double prime is less than zero, then f is concave down. And we may be familiar with this term. Uh, concave up kind of means it's creating a bowl. Uh, concave down would be, well, it's upside down. More technically, the rate at which we are increasing is increasing or you could say the tangent lines are located underneath the curve for all of these concave up scenarios as opposed to concave down where the rate at which we are decreasing is increasing so we're decreasing more per each unit and our tangent lines are all located above. So that's the concavity test. So the second derivative will tell us whether we're concave up or concave down. And the point in which we switch from concave down to concave up, that's called a point of inflection. Inflection. Alright, now let's take a look at the second derivative test. The second derivative test is another way to look at uh, local extrema. So, second derivative test. It says if f prime is equal to zero 
and f double prime is less than zero. So what we have is a flat spot that is concave down, then f, oops, we don't want that, then our function has a local min, sorry, local max, has a local max. So you can see what we've got is a maximum. It's flat and concave down. Alternatively, if our derivative is equal to zero and f double prime is greater than zero, what we have is a flat spot that is concave up. So f will have a local min. Now, of course, we can only apply this if the function has two derivatives, or it is twi twice differentiable, and our f double prime doesn't equal zero. If it doesn't exist or equals zero, then we're going to have to go back to the first derivative test to talk about max and min. All right, let's take a look at the problem set. Okay, the directions here ask us to do three things. The first is to find all points of inflection and a point of inflection is going to be a point where the concavity changes so when it goes from concave up to concave down or vice versa it also asks us to find all the discontinuities and we will combine those two pieces of information to find the intervals of concavity so let's start with problem number two Problem two is a uh, cubic polynomial, and cubic polynomials are all polynomials are continuous everywhere, so it is not discontinuous anywhere, which is nice. The first thing we want to do is find g prime of w, and that's going to be negative 3w squared plus 4w, and then the second derivative we will get to be negative 6w plus 4. And if we want to find points of inflection, what we do is we set our second derivative equal to four, 0. And we find that 4 is equal to 6w, or 2 thirds is equal to w. So at w, we probably have a point of inflection. Much like our increasing and decreasing intervals, we're going to set up a number line with our uh, potential inflection points and our discontinuities. And in this problem, we only have the one point, so we'll put it at 2 thirds. And we're going to test on each side of it. So I want to test what is f double prime of 0 and what is f double prime of 1. And if I stick f double prime of 0 into this, or 0 into my f, sorry this should be g, g, so used to the rules f. Anyways, g, if we stick 0 into it, we're going to get a positive answer, and if we stick 1 into it, we'll get a negative answer. What that tells us is we are concave up from negative infinity to two-thirds and we are concave down from two-thirds to positive infinity. So polynomials are pretty straightforward. Uh, when you have degree three then you'll have one piece that's concave up and one piece that's concave down. So let's take a look at another example. Problem number four, which is on the next page. <laughs> All right, so problem four is a quadratic, which is even easier. So a quadratic, our g prime 
is going to be 4s minus 4, and our g double prime is equal to 4. So we ask ourselves, where does that equal 0? And 4 never equals 0, so there are there's no points of inflection, which means this function is either concave up everywhere or concave down everywhere. So because g double prime is always positive, this is always concave up. So concave up from negative infinity to infinity. And that kind of jives with our understanding of quadratics. A positive leading coefficient of a quadratic tells us that the function is going to look something like a parabola that opens upwards, and that's concave up everywhere. All right, let's move to problem number six. So for problem six, we have f prime is going to be negative two cosine of s, and then f double prime is going to be 2 sine of s. And we ask ourselves about discontinuities. This is continuous everywhere, so we're good. We just need to find when does the second derivative equal 0. So we set this equal to 0. And that means where is sine of s equal to 0? And I know that that occurs at negative pi, zero, and pi. And you can do that from a unit circle or just envisioning what the graph looks like. We have zero, pi, and then all multiples of pi. But because we're restricted to negative pi to pi, we're just going to have those three points. So we draw our number line, negative pi, zero, and pi. And we just need to test on the inside. Let's test f double prime of negative 1 and f double prime of positive 1. So if we stick f double prime of negative 1 into this equation, we are going to get a negative answer. And if I stick f double prime of positive 1 into the function, I will get a positive answer, which tells me that we are concave down from negative pi to 0 and concave up from 0 to pi, and that we have a point of inflection I think I forgot to do this on the other ones. A point of inflection at x equals 0. So that's where we switch from concave down to concave up. And if we wanted to, we could try to picture what this graph looks like. Negative 2 sine looks, oh, something like that. And we can see that we are concave down and then concave up. So that that supports what we found with calculus. All right, let's move on to problem number eight. Looks like we have a fourth degree polynomial, so we'll probably get something which looks roughly like that. So I'm predicting two intervals of concave up and one interval of concave down. So let's start by finding our derivative, h prime is 4w to the third minus 2w, and then h double prime is going to be 12w squared minus 2. And if we want to set this equal to 0, we will move the 2 to the other side and we'll get w is equal to plus and minus root 1 over 6. Or if you wanted to, you could say plus and minus root 6 over 6. 
like that. Then we want to set up the number line. And root 1 over 6 is really close to 0. Root 1 6 and positive root 1 6. So we need to find some decimal to stick in there uh, that's very close to 0 and less than root 1 over 6. So I'm going to test h of point 0.2, h double prime of point 0.2, h double prime of negative point 0.2, and then we'll do that. Okay. Starting with h double prime of negative 1, if we stick negative 1 into h double prime, we will get a positive answer. If we stick h double prime of negative point 0.2, we will get a negative answer. If we stick point 0.2 in there, again we'll get a negative answer. And then if we stick 1 in there, we will get a positive answer. So you can see that what we have is a point of inflection right here and a point of inflection here because that's where our concavity change is. So we are concave up from negative infinity to negative root 1 6 and we are also concave up from positive root 1 6 to infinity. We are concave down from negative one sixth to positive root one sixth. And we get our points of inflection at x equals plus and minus root one over six. So keep in mind a point of inflection is not where the second derivative equals zero, but rather where the second derivative changes signs from positive to negative or negative to positive. All right, I think I've got one more here, problem number 10. Uh, that looks like pretty straightforward polynomial, so I'm going to leave that one to you to uh, sift through on your own as part of the homework. Now, I know this video didn't go too much into using the first and second derivative test. Um, all of these skills right around here are building to get to the point where we can actually, if I give you a function equation, we can actually draw a approximate graph of what the function looks like because we can tell the intervals of increasing or we can tell our intervals of concave down and we'll use all of that to build the equation or from the equation to build the graph. Alright, thanks for watching the video. Hopefully now you kind of have a solid sense of what is the first derivative test, what is the second derivative test, and what is the concavity test. And you can use all of those to explain max, min, increase, decrease, concave up, concave down, etc. So the general shape of a graph. Graph. Featured below we've got these diagrams and these are you could consider them moldings that go around a door. Uh, that's what the architrave is. So when you have your your door frame and around the door frame you drop in these moldings that kind of accentuate the door frame. So there you go. Have a good day.